I want to speak to you a message that I will call throw Tobiah out throw Tobiah out I want to speak to you about a person in the Bible he's really a footnote in the history of Nehemiah his name is Tobiah Tobiah he lived around 445 BC he's mentioned in 13 verses in the Bible and his name is really synonymous synonymous with negativity ridicule toward God's people and God's work during the time of Nehemiah Nehemiah was a cup holder for the king of Persia and he received the permission to go and to fortify the walls of Jerusalem to rebuild its walls and to rebuild its gates as he arrived in Jerusalem to rebuild the walls and to seek the good of Jerusalem he encountered right away this guy named Tobiah Tobiah operated with two other guys who helped him Tobiah was one of the governors placed by the king of Persia over the areas that he conquered and Tobiah he was very frustrated with the fact that Nehemiah wanted to rebuild something and bring good to the children of Israel. Tobiah is dead. He died long time ago. I do believe that this attitude and the spirit of Tobiah continues to live today. And that's what we want to talk about. I want to compare Tobiah to a demon. The reason why is because he's a perfect picture, a shadow of how demons operate and what they do even today. The first thing I want to mention about Tobiah is Tobiah attacks from the outside but always seeks to move on the inside. Let me give you just a short little history. Tobiah spent most of his time attacking Nehemiah, discouraging him, intimidating him, threatening him. He even hired prophets to bring fear into Nehemiah to discourage his hands from war, excuse me, from work. Many times he challenged him and said, I want us to meet outside over there and over there he sent letters he wanted to discourage the work of Nehemiah and then when that did not work Tobiah what he did is he aligned himself with some people in Jerusalem and then when that did not work when Nehemiah was gone Tobiah moved in into the temple of God and took rent not in Jerusalem in the actual temple of God and guess which room he rented the treasury room that's like a vault in the bank that's where he decided to live this guy was a governor appointed by the king of Persia what is his problem with Nehemiah like leave Nehemiah be he attacks him from the outside he creates alliances on the inside and then he looks for access to move inside he doesn't occupy the temple he occupies a room clear picture of how demons operate number one attack from the outside i'm going to give you a few verses in nehemiah 2 10 it says tobiah was deeply disturbed that someone wanted to seek the well-being of israel nehemiah 2 19 he laughed and mocked at nehemiah Nehemiah 4.3, he despised and reapproached their work. Nehemiah 4.7.8, after some progress, he conspired to create confusion. Nehemiah 6.2, he invited Nehemiah to a meeting with intent to harm him. And Nehemiah 6.13, he hired prophets to cause Nehemiah to be afraid. And I love this because in Nehemiah 6 3 this is what Nehemiah says. So I sent messenger to them saying I'm doing a great work so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent this message four times and I answered them in the same manner. Demons love to attack Christians from the outside first. When you are born again spirit filled you are called to rebuild the walls of your city of your family even of your own mind you are on the assignment from God the king of kings and the lord of lords when you serve him as your as a cup bearer he will give you an assignment and that assignment will be to build something he will give you a call to build your, your family he will give you a call to build new mindset in your own life he will give you a call to raise your children he will give you a call to start a small group he will give you a call to start a ministry every Christian has a call from God 
you might not have a call to build a temple but you will have a call to rebuild the wall you will have a call from God the moment you begin that work listen to me very carefully Tobiah will start bothering you Tobiah is completely at peace when you are not doing anything for God because you become honestly no threat to him but the moment you begin to do the work of the Lord the moment you begin to cast out demons heal the sick tell other people about Christ you must understand this is not to scare anybody to do ministry but this is to encourage us that God is building up people who have a spine people who are strong in God I am not in any way saying if you do ministry the devil is going to attack you what I'm saying is if you do anything towards God Tobias will come out out of woodworks they will come out out of nowhere and they will try to intimidate you they will try to laugh at you mock you discourage you sometimes they'll do it through a nightmare and sometimes they'll do it through the things not happening as fast as you thought sometimes he'll use your family sometimes he'll use people close to you who will mock not understand discourage you sometimes he will use the external circumstances to say look you did this your life is worse you're trying to serve God your life is not getting better and you must be strong in your mind you got to make up your mind that if demons demons can attack you from the inside they torment you from the inside but if you are delivered and you're doing the work of God it's normal to experience Tobiah trying to be a thorn in the flesh in your life you must differentiate between demonic oppression and spiritual warfare spiritual warfare is you're building the wall and somebody is not happy and somebody tries to intimidate you somebody tries to discourage you somebody tries to wear you down somebody tries to take you down somebody tries to send you some kind of bad dreams bad prophets or maybe bad circumstances and you have to have this strong resolution to cling to your calling stay connected to your assignment I love what Nehemiah says I cannot come down to you I'm doing a high thing for God keep on talking Tobiah but I'm gonna keep on building keep on sending those discouragements but I'm gonna keep on going stick to your assignment stick stick to your stick to you what God called you to do do not let your hands be discouraged don't listen to everything Goliath says about you David he wants to intimidate you he wants you to make you feel less than he wants to make you feel like who do you think you are cute little boy you came against me like I'm a dog or something you know you should just go back be with the shepherds be with the sheep but David he did not allow the temptation of intimidation to take him out of his assignment I've been in ministry long enough to know one thing Tobiah is a real they can come through other people they can come in your own voice this buzzing little like a fly constantly buzzes and makes you feel inferior sometimes you take three four days to fast the first day you get this nightmare you're like man what is happening do I need deliverance and there's a difference you'll know the difference between demonic oppression on the inside and demonic attack on the outside to make you stop doing what God called you to do to make you be discouraged to make you be cautious to make you be too careful and to make you feel like oh my goodness to live in phobia to live in confusion and to live is like I don't want to do the work of the Lord I don't want to do a small group I don't want to volunteer anymore I don't want to give too much anymore why because my finances are suffering I don't want to help other people why because somebody just attacked me somebody lied about me somebody betrayed me I want to be too careful and too calculated and too cautious but be what Nehemiah says I cannot come down to you I have a great work that I'm doing God called me to do this work I just want to encourage you cling to your assignment cling to your assignment in the face of your attack stay to your position when you're facing opposition stay in your position when you're facing opposition to all the naysayers to all the secret haters you have to say what Isaiah what Nehemiah said I'm doing a great work I cannot come down that means I'm not stopping I'm like a bulldozer I'm pushing through I'm serving God come hell high water I'm gonna be winning the lost I'm gonna be preaching the good news I'm gonna be loving people I'm gonna be serving people and I'm not stopping that because this is what the Lord called me 
and he has given me the strength Jesus says in this world you will have tribulation and Jesus did not say so stop serving he says be of good cheer when the tribulations come against you be of good cheer lift up your head square your shoulders I have overcome the world and he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world if you're going through a breakup if you're going through a breakdown if you're going through a difficult financial situation this is the enemy wants you to stop your assignment he wants you to stop building there are demons on the loose there are Tobias on the loose the moment the king sends you to build the wall the moment the king sends you to start a ministry the enemy will right away send at Tobiah. Tobiah will never throw a physical punch. He will open up his mouth. His strongest weapon is his mouth. His strongest weapon is accusation. His strongest weapon is intimidation. His strongest weapon is confusion. His strongest weapon is negativity. His strongest weapon is discouragement and that's why you have to pull up the shield of faith and shut them down. Shut them down. Shut down those arrows of the enemy. Shut down the voice of negativity. Shut down the voice of doubt. Shut down the voice that says you won't make it you won't survive it your best days are behind you your life is over you have to shut them down lift up the shield of faith great warrior of God lift up the shield of faith great woman of God great man of God because greater is he that is inside of you than the one that's in the world you will stand on the assignment and you will finish your assignment you will run your race you will keep your faith every Tobiah will die every Tobiah will fail no weapon formed against you will prosper says the Lord and every tongue that rises against you you shall condemn come on somebody give God a shout of praise give God a praise right now confuse those Tobias right now come on somebody be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind so many people when they embark on doing anything for God it throws them off when they see confusion when they see when your own mind becomes a battlefield and you must discern it's not always because you're in sin sometimes it's because you're in your assignment and it's completely normal to let the enemy you know create these little circumstances or create these little mind wars this mental fog that just comes on you like a cloud you're like what is happening keep on keeping on like one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, men said never 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 give up if you're going through hell keep on going if you're going through the valley of the shadow of death make sure you're still moving don't stop don't park don't, don't 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 drop your nets in here don't don't pitch your tent in here keep on going if you're going through a challenging time right now this is Tobiah trying to discourage your arms discourage your legs and discourage your strength he wants to discourage he wants to diss on your courage he wants to diss on your enthusiasm he wants to diss on your fire he wants to diss on your prayer life he is standing he is dissing on you he's discouraging you he's mocking you he's this he's saying who do you think you are you're not holy enough you're not good enough you're not anointed enough you're not strong enough you're not connected enough look at your past look at your yesterday this is Tobiah out there so that you, he can stop the work that God calls you to do but you gotta tell that Tobiah I'm not coming down to you I will hold my position in the face of opposition I will cling to my calling in the face of the criticism in the face of the attack come on somebody if you're watching this spam that chat right now if this word is for you say I receive and number two I want you to notice about Tobiah when he attacked from the outside he couldn't succeed didn't stop Nehemiah in fact Nehemiah was moving forward then what Tobiah did is he relied on his alliances Tobiah was strengthened through his connections he by himself was weak but Tobiah had two other guys I call them the three stooges of Nehemiah Tobiah aligned himself in Salabat Sanbalat something along those lines that's how you pronounce his name I think and Gashem in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 19 and Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 1 and these three stooges they were governors under the king of Persia Sanbalat was the governor over Samaria he married the daughter 
of the son of a priest and Gashem was the chief of the Arabs south of the Palestine. So Tobiah most of the cases when you see Tobiah in the book of Nehemiah he doesn't come by himself he's too weak he's too cowardly he always comes with two other guys he always comes with his brothers and Tobiah loves to rely on alliances but that's not what his strength really lied where he got closer to the temple to be inside of the temple it's when he allied himself aligned himself connected himself to the priest let's read Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 4 now before this Eliashib the priest having authority over the, the storerooms of the house of our God was allied with Tobiah for some dumb reason the priest of God makes an alliance with the enemy of God's work let me say that again the priest of God makes an alliance with the enemy of God's work few things I want to highlight one whatever enemy you're battling with be very careful not to go into covenant with that that is lingering longer than it should in your life where you allow the season of discouragement to become something where you are now a discouraged person and discouragement is who you are you're just a negative person it's just who you are it's now what you are so many people go into covenants with those things God fully anointed them to conquer people become homosexuals like that where they simply say well this is just who I am and everyone should accept it but if you track them down you will see that's not they didn't believe this all their lives especially those who grew up in Christian circles they believe that this is not something who they are this is something that they battled with but after a while when you battle with something for so long you can get exhausted and it, it can get tiring where you will say you know what there is an easy way out and the easy way out is if I just accept it if I just make it who I am the culture will support me the culture will embrace me there are laws right now in my favor everyone if, if they say anything against me I can take him to court and it's easy to make covenants with things God calls you to conquer now if you are not a Christian in this room today this doesn't apply to you you can make a covenant with whoever you want to make a covenant with and honestly God is not your judge one day he will but right now you are your own God you can make up rules as you go <laughs> you can do whatever you want you, you got the freedom but if you are a Christian who claims that Jesus is your Lord you have no right to come up with your own constitution based on your experiences come on somebody when I came to the United States I came without speaking English I came at the age of 13 I have no right to invent my own constitution when I became a citizen of the United States I have to embrace the constitution of the nation that I live in if I would have come to the States and said well guys I'm from Ukraine I just want to let you know yo we're changing constitution why because a Ukrainian arrived in the States no they'll deport me back to where I came from they're like dude if you want that constitution you got to go to that country in this country we have a different constitution so my friend when you become the citizen of heaven when you become the child of God there is a constitution that you cannot amend you cannot change this constitution and you gotta stop altering it you gotta stop changing it to fit your weakness you gotta stop changing it to fit your lifestyle you gotta start changing it you gotta stop changing it to fit your compromise this constitution is so powerful it can change your homosexual tendencies it can change your lustful life it can change your addiction it can change your abusive patterns it can change your past this word is so powerful it can change you if you stop changing it but the bible says that Tobiah made an alliance with the priest it's happening today when people make alliances with the enemy sometimes because they're so discouraged it's been so long the battle has been prolonged you're like you know what I don't know if I'm gonna ever win let me just make a deal let me just sell out let me just make a covenant 
but another part where people make covenants with and I want to touch on specifically when you make inner vows I will always be like this when you make inner vows in response to an alcoholic father I hate him I'll never be like that these inner vows vows are alliances with the enemy in response to painful circumstances you make this very deep emotional inner vow you're opening the door from the enemy attacking you on the inside to the enemy now coming in closer and closer to having a foothold on the inside when you develop soul ties with people that you have no business having soul ties through sexual immorality through very strong unhealthy dependence on your mom or on your dad on your pastor the bible says the men of judah their soul was attached to david the bible says that jacob's soul was attached his life was wrapped up in the benjamin even the rest of the siblings knew if benjamin something happens to benjamin jacob will take his own life it's over for him that's not healthy when you wrap your life around somebody that much that people know if that person is gone you can't move on the bible says david his soul was attached to jonathan my friend when you are married to your spouse you have an emotional tie that's completely healthy when you have children you have an emotional tie to them that is completely healthy but there comes things where they become unhealthy where your life is now wrapped up and it's controlled by an emotional tie by a soul tie and we have to be very careful because the bible says god wants to break i'm going to read to you the verse it says that the enemy wants to break our soul into pieces in psalm chapter 7 verse 2 it says lest he tear my soul like a lion rendering it in pieces while there is none to deliver one of the ways the enemy likes to get a foothold in is through soul ties inner vows and some christians i've prayed for one person for deliverance who verbally contractually made a covenant with devil himself in exchange for sex and money while claiming to be a christian we prayed for one young man you can see the video on youtube who when his brother died he went to a cemetery, a cemetery digging up dirt and asking satan to enter him while he was catholic now i don't understand how people would do that but you must understand is that your ability to make vows inner vows alliances and soul ties does not disappear when you become a christian how could tobiah make an alliance with the priest i can't explain that but it happened watch your heart protect your mouth when you are in the battle when you're in the spiritual war zone when things are difficult because the enemy is putting pressure on the inside so that you on the outside so you can cave in on the inside and you can just snap and you was just saying you know whatever happens and you start going around maybe cursing your destiny cursing your children and like Rachel when she was birthing her son you know and she called him Ben Oni meaning the son of my suffering because she died in the process of delivering him and Jacob is like that's not gonna happen Jacob is like yeah my mama called me supplanter I lived with that for half of my life cheating lying cutting corners he's like this kid is not gonna become the son the son of suffering he went and he right away switched his name he said the, the son of my right hand called him Benjamin why because he's like this kid is not gonna live his life suffering just because he was birthed in suffering I'm gonna go and cancel that he's not gonna have those words over him be careful what you pronounce be careful these deep-seated convictions that you develop in the process of difficult marriage in the profit in the process of going through a very difficult time in your business with your children and you start saying this I wish I would have never had them you know it would have been better for me to do this or that you know what this sucks I hate this and you begin to kind of release that and these are deeply convictional words that take root and the enemy might not enter in but he already got the code 
he already got the keys and the third place we see Tobiah not only he's putting pressure on the outside he develops an alliance with somebody on the inside and the third place we see and I want you to notice when he really succeeded when Nehemiah took a trip to Babylon as long as Nehemiah was there Tobiah even though he could probably squeeze himself in there was a boss in town there was a sheriff in town there was somebody who was watching over everything he couldn't do anything but when Nehemiah goes back to the king that he was serving as a cupbearer Tobiah like a slithering snake comes into the temple and guess he's asking right away for a room I'm thinking I'm like dude why do you need the room you're a governor you probably have your own palace because see the enemy always wants to have a place inside he might not possess you he can't possess you as a Christian but he's not seeking to possess you as a Christian he just wants a room maybe it's your anger room maybe it's your speech room maybe it's your bones the health of your bones room maybe it's your marriage it's, it's what you do when all the kids are asleep your wife is asleep and the room of what you browse on the internet that room maybe it's some other he just wants a room and in this case he got the best room he got the room with all the finances the bible says Tobiah didn't hurt anybody he didn't kill anybody but what he did when he lived in that room is the Levites stopped receiving their monthly paychecks and Levites all left the temple went to work why because Tobiah was bottlenecked all their salaries now he didn't kill anybody he didn't hurt anybody he just stopped the flow of finances for the people who were supposed to work in the temple and Nehemiah comes back and he sees he's like what is Tobiah doing in the temple Tobiah's like I got the keys who put you into the temple the alliances that I made have opened the door for me and they gave me a room in the temple I love Nehemiah this guy was brutal I want you to see what Nehemiah does Nehemiah 13 verse 6 and 7 but during all this time I was not in Jerusalem for in the 32nd year of the king of Babylon I had returned to the king then after certain days I obtained leave from the king and I came to Jerusalem and I discovered the evil that Eliashib had done for Tobiah in preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God when your Nehemiah goes on vacation your Tobiah comes in to move and rent your rooms Nehemiah speaks of your commitment to prayer Nehemiah speaks of your Bible reading Nehemiah speaks to your consistent life of discipline in what you watch and what you hear Nehemiah speaks of you going to sleep a little bit earlier waking up a little bit earlier Nehemiah speaks of you reading books instead of just watching entertainment Nehemiah speaks of you on Saturday instead of just going and watching the boat races and getting a little sipping sands a tipsy Christian you're coming and helping at the new church Nehemiah speaks of you not staying up late because after 10 o'clock you're not going to do anything productive by going to sleep early waking up and being in God's Word that's what Nehemiah speaks of when your Nehemiah goes to Babylon please understand Tobiah comes in I demonstrated it many times in this service if we turn off these lights the darkness the Tobiah is going to walk in right there instantly I don't have to invite the darkness I guess let's try it the moment light goes out guess what happens darkness comes in when Nehemiah leaves Tobiah comes in he didn't come to rule the temple he just come to occupy one room there's a room of you as a husband there's a room of you as a father there's a room of you as a male there's a room of you as a man there's a room of you as a businessman there is a room of you as a minister there's different rooms your soul is made out of rooms even demons returning back said we will return to our house they see our body our soul as a house and every house has different stories as an attic has a basement has different rooms and what Tobiah wants he knows he can't get the spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in there but through our casualness through our weaknesses through our sins he wants to slither slip in and begin to occupy one room and maybe your life is not 
demonized. But you're constantly missing and noticing Levites aren't getting the checks. You're noticing something is not right with my health. Doctors can't find it. Something is not right with my finances. It's almost like there's a hole in my pocket. What is happening? And I want to ask you a question today. Has Nehemiah left the temple? Has Tobiah got inside? What has replaced your relationship with the Lord? The enemy can't get in and not always he seeks to kill and destroy. Sometimes he settles for stealing. My brother and my sister-in-law had an incident that was on the news where um, they forgot to close the garage doors in the wonderful safe Pasco and the garage doors were left open and they were so generous not only their Subaru was inside of the garage they just left the keys inside of the Subaru now there was some guy on the bike roaming around that saw that as an opportunity now he didn't see the fact that it, it's not his he never in, went inside of their house he didn't harass them he didn't threaten them he didn't do anything bad to them he simply went in got the keys and drove that car out from the garage and that's really how the enemy operates how Tobiah operates when you open your garage and you leave the keys inside he might not come and with the gun and beat the living lights out of you but he will just take something that you left vulnerable now thankfully Lilia Lily my sister-in-law the guy really stole from the wrong couple because my sister-in-law works in one police department my brother-in-law works in another police department literally this was a really really bad decision he should have stole from somebody who does not work in police departments and they have a really good insurance that if they wouldn't find the car the insurance would pay him more than the car was worth so like it was it, it would work out for their good in spite of their situation but the problem is that he was not found until he went and he stole something else from somebody else and then the police caught him they found the car thankfully the car wasn't damaged the car was restored the car was 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 brought back but they learned a very valuable lesson after this happened I from the outside in when I heard this story I was like you know what I need to improve on security in my own house because it has been more than once that I left the garage doors open <laughs> okay the next day some salesman was roaming around our neighborhood selling security and usually I'm one of those guys when somebody comes and selling stuff at my door whether Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons or salespeople I have one word and that's one word get behind me Satan that's it I just close the door I don't want to whatever you're selling I'm not interested this time I was like come on in inside tell me more and my wife had me and I I got security system I got alarm this morning the jackal went out to to the uh, to the to the bathroom outside it triggered the alarm the alarm beep 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 you got five seconds and police will come and so now even my own dog can get arrested because of the security system in the house so I just want to encourage you when you hear a testimony of somebody else may it remind you to lock up your own garage doors may it remind you to secure your life by the blood of Jesus and the word of God may it remind you close the garage doors close the windows set up the password in your life listen dedicate your life to more holiness dedicate your life to walk in the fear of God dedicate your life to walk in prayer and to walk in fasting dedicate your life to holiness why because only then the enemy cannot touch you he cannot get inside he cannot take your car he may try to oppress you from the outside he may create spiritual warfare but my friend you will be safe and sound because Jesus Christ is the Lord and he is the Savior of your soul.